Hi, I'm Julianne Krupa and this is The Impatient Movie Goer. Today I want to talk to you about the film Compartment Number 6. I fell in love with this film when it first came out and I was so eager to write about it because I believed it to be an honest work of beautiful art, a naturalistic portrait of a woman's journey. But by the time I was ready to film the episode, Russia's violent invasion into Ukraine had already begun and in despair, I held myself back from filming. I have to say that to some degree, Russia's terrible war has changed the way I see these characters and their world, a byproduct of the corrosive nature of war. Though compartment number six was made by Finnish director Juho Kosmanet, Kosmanen. <laughs> the film is, after all, a Russian-Finnish co-production. The story takes place in Russia and explores a young Finnish woman's experience of Russian culture in the late 90s, in part through her encounter with Lioha, played by Yuri Boris Borisov. My own horror and rage over Russia's full-scale war against Ukraine, which continues to cause pain and injury to so many, including people I love, seemed to me to be a reason not to draw attention to this film or to highlight any Russian work of art at this time. And yet, as almost two years have passed and the terrible war persists, I can recognize compartment number six as a wondrous cinematic specimen, one worthy of exploration. And if anything, it proves a window onto an aspect of Russian society from the near past Subverting stereotypes, yes, but also shining a light on elements that remain impenetrable and also potentially harmful. Like the icy landscape, landscape to which the main characters travel. Compartment number six has the potential to teach us something about the mindset of those buried within the confines of a system, a system of oppression. It still reveals a beating heart. It is only for a moment that we are privy to this intimate understanding. Compartment number six is an exploration of the harsh Russian scenery, both literally and internally, a place that is at times enlivening and even lovable and at others lonely and cold and devastating. As seen through the perspective of Laura, a Finnish archeology span student played by Sadie Harla, living in Moscow in a pre-digital universe sometime after the fall of the Soviet Union. In the face of a somewhat disappointing and unrequited love affair with intellectual seductress Irina, Laura travels by train to Mormonsk, a port city in the north, to see 10,000-year-old petroglyphs. We all have to know where we're coming from, she will later say, regurgitating someone else's words. As Laura tra travels alone across a bleak landscape, she is faced with her own sense of curiosity and adventure, as well as her disillusionment, forced to let go of preconceptions about the people she encounters, especially her compartment mate, Lioha, a laborer on his way to work in the mines. At first glance, Lioha feels like a certain type of recognizable character with his shaved head and brusque demeanor. He removes a bottle of alcohol from his bag, places it on the table after showing his passport to the conductor, getting right down to it. He makes some throwaway comment to Laura, who obviously feels uncomfortable in his presence, wanting to escape the confines of the cramped, dimly lit compartment. She's accustomed to scholars, to intellectuals like Irina, Lioha is altogether new. Lioha spouts familiar rhetoric. We beat the Nazis. The moon, we went there, he mumbles, pointing upwards, spouting the accomplishments of his great country. Lioha is clearly an indoctrinated fellow, having found his place in the tough guy milieu that allows him to hide his softer side. Raised in a landscape that encourages harsh endurance, he represents a familiar type. But he is more than a seemingly heartless character. In fact, Irina is the one for all her sophistication, her good looks and charms, who is careless in her affections, sleeping with whomever she wishes, making 
no efforts to protect Laura's heart. The train ticket collector with her brazen powder blue eyeshadow and uniform also displays a callous demeanor. When Laura asks to change cars, you think you have a choice, she asks, but looks can be deceiving. Even the young and seemingly gentle Finnish troubadour who boards their compartment riding, riding along with them for a while gives the impression of someone who should be reliable and kind, but he proves to be an uncaring thief. He steals Laura's camcorder and as a result, all of her recorded messages to Irina. At this point, Laura's words begin to unravel and all that is familiar falls away. And as the story progresses, moving further into the endless snowy plains, she will transition from detesting Lioha to caring for him as she encounters his human side. What do you have there that we don't have? He asks, speaking about Laura's home country. She corrects him, saying she comes from Finland and not Estonia. He says he doesn't care. His callousness a cover for his ignorance and his embarrassment. At first sight, appearing to be the most primitive of brutes, Lioha slowly reveals himself to be a sensitive and sympathetic character that fears intimacy. In Laura's presence, a cruel and impenetrable world melts away to expose a glimpse of something else. In the end, the harsh landscape will win, proving to have a masterful hold on his heart. And yet we see before us a kind-hearted person, even if it is only for a brief moment. This glimmer is what makes compartment number six so beautiful and real because there is a kind of shimmering, a soul that emerges, a sun that is Laura's smile, that is their connection in this bleakest of landscapes, and the sense that everything is temporary including the ephemeral joys of travel and of life itself. When at a stopover, Lioha takes Lara to meet his favorite babushka. She's better than a mom, he quips. She asks him where he got his car. I have connections, is his cheeky reply. This is the kind of line that makes us start to feel for Lioha. He is a brute, guarded and vulgar, but he's also silly and vulnerable and cares a lot. This tough guy persona kind of armor that will protect him in a cruel and heartless world. We come to understand that he is tough because he's so vulnerable and afraid. Afraid of people who are educated, afraid of the unknown of other cities and places. When seen without his armor, Lioha resembles a lost young man. At a rest stop, he awkwardly slips and falls in the snow. Later, when Laura points out what she has seen, he blatantly denies having fallen despite his snow-encrusted hat and coat. He is also a jester and a fool. He's a stranger, but Laura still knows he'll do anything for her. He is loyal and also caring in his way, unlike Irina. Women are very clever animals, the wise babuchka says. Do what your inner self tells you. Laura has the courage to voyage into emotional vulnerability, but Lioha remains a terrified animal when it comes to his feelings. When the two go, go to the dining car to celebrate their near arrival, Laura gives Lioha a drawing she made of him, of his face while he was sleeping. Lioha reacts intensely to this gift, almost as, almost as if it pains him to be seen through a lens of tenderness. At the first sign of a real connection with the two embrace on a train, he runs away and disappears. But he will resurface after she goes looking for him at the mines. He arrives at her hotel in the middle of the night with a seemingly unsavory character waiting for them, engine running. The car will take them to a group of seamen who will bring them by boat, despite dangerous conditions, to the ancient petroglyphs at last. Lioha will do anything to make it happen, to make her dream come true. They trek through the snow toward the rocky horizon. We never get to see the images of the ancient drawings. Instead, what we experience is the sound of waves, boots on ice, a frozen, confined world below, their connection to each other, to timelessness, to time. That's it, Lioha asks, and Laura simply nods. That's it she answers. 
Lioha will ultimately leave without saying goodbye. He does manage a small crinkled note with the drawing of Laura's face on one side and a farewell on the other. The depiction is as primitive as a modern day petroglyph in answer to Laura's archeological yearnings. This scene is touching as sunlight emanates from Laura's beaming smile. Compartment number six boasts a realism that you can almost smell. It leaves you with the sensation of a soaring heart, of life lived on the edge of seizing the day or the night in a way you likely have only a few times in your life. It transmits a feeling of freedom and longing and as the 1989 desireless song Voyage Voyage returns, a recurring refrain, we are offered something like a contact high, recalling that sensation of life lived on the edge. And yet, when I see Lioha now, I see him as a young man that might have easily been drafted into Putin's war, or her, perhaps one that may have gone willingly. I can only imagine these are things I don't know. But they disappoint and scare me. Now when I watch the film, I think about all of it, the time that comes after, the splintering of our world and the loss of life in its wake. And I'm reminded of how war colors our world and our understanding of one another, of how in war everybody loses, how in war nobody wins. And with that, Thank you for watching, for listening. Compartment number six really is a beautiful film and I recommend seeing it. Take care of yourself. Keep looking for the beauty. I'm Julie Krupa. This is The Impatient Movie Goer. I'll see you next time. Thank you.